world is so small Till it ain't, till it ain't, till it ain't, till it ain't, yeah I'm building up a wall Till it break, till it break, till it break. Hi guys home immediately got into my pajamas because i'm so tired i forgot my camera today so i've been filming on my phone but i just realized that i could do this bit on my camera so i'll be back hello uh, i wanted to do a little haul of what i got Ta -da. tomorrow or the next time i film i'm going to uh, be translating one of the paintings that i saw into a digital piece which i've already done which I'll share with you into a like a like an actual real life painting. But for now, I'm just going to show you the things that I got. I pay, did pay five pounds for this tote bag because capitalism has a chokehold on me. So I'll show you what I got in the museum first. First of all, I picked out some prints. I already have one Van Gogh uh, print. It's the Wheatfield one. I got this one. Love is still alive, me. The pretty. The next one I got is this, the painting that I did a colour study of on my iPad and I'm going to do a paint paint version. What hello doggies, you're supposed to go outside because you not want to. You're so lazy. The last print I got is this one. No, oh that's yours, you can have that. Then I got this stupid book, just a book of cat art. Who doesn't love cats and art? a paintbrush because i really like this and i've just realized it's a pencil on the other side don't know why they would do that i also got a pencil it's the national gallery on it somewhere then i got uh then we went to the art shop around the corner unless a square what is its name I cannot remember it's a accordion sketchbook and basically i'm just gonna send myself a little challenge the same but different and then on the other side something else so much fun last but not least i got 10 caran d'ache wax pastels i've wanted to try these for a very long time they had them on offer i think 10 were these 10 were 15 pound is this like a sticker or something i don't know the color is very cute and nice
Lola, what are you doing? Bum bum. That's what it looks like. This one's a bit wonky, but you know, deal with it. And I didn't want to start on this wall because then I would not stop. <laughs> room don't even think about it don't even look at it don't even just I went to Hobbycraft and picked up some things the Hobbycraft near me doesn't it doesn't have the best options oh well first thing I got was this it's a palette I wanted to try this because um, at the moment I have a palette very large and this is like this isn't like small but in theory it might be easier to store and easier to put to the side. I'm constantly trying to juggle desk space and I have two desks but I only ever end up using one of them. Um, next thing I got is a bit different. I've been knitting because I am 45. Nan taught me to knit a very long time ago when I was a little lady and then I forgot how to do it. Recently I got my mum to show me again. I'm really bad. <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna make is literally a scarf just to practice. Wow, what beautiful fun colours. Also I just ripped my acrylic nails off. Don't look at them too much. Um, I also got this. I don't know why I was up for a pink theme but I was. Um, that's one thing that they do have in the Hobbycraft by me. A lot of cotton and yarn and it's a cool Thing. This is what I'm going to make the scarf, scarf, scarf out of. Um, and then I got, I've got some oil pastels coming and I've also got some wax pastels here and I wanted to blend them but I didn't want to use my fingers because I don't, I'm, I'm not one for using my fingers and then going and cleaning my house so then I get marks all over the page. So I got some blending stumps. I also got some of this crappy acrylic paint. It's probably not going to be the best, but uh, I just thought for extra. I mean, I'm not making anything of archival quality, so I think we're fine. It's like a shimmery pink. And finally, I got some fluorescent pink acrylic paint. Wow, it's looking a bit more magenta on the screen. I don't know how it'll show up, but um, it is fluorescent, and I've been using this type of colour for underpainting. I used a really crappy paint for the underpainting of the painting that I'm planning on doing in this video. Oh, I also got, uh, yesterday, I was in HomeSense and they had this, uh, I don't know anything about this brand or if it's good or bad or popular or not, um, but it's a little tiny pot of iridescent paint. Can you see the sparkles? I did this piece in my sketchbook and then just for the funsies I added the 
iridescent -y thing. I didn't necessarily apply it in the best way. It's hard to show in this lighting that's not the best, but anyway, I used it and it is fun. Hello and welcome to the voiceover part of this video. This is my first time doing a voiceover, so please bear with. I'm a bit insecure about my voice, but we're gonna push forward anyway. I'm also dealing with a very old laptop, so if there's fanning noise in the background, that's what that is. I just wanted to talk a bit about the painting that I'm currently doing. I've, I'll put up on screen the original version that I saw in the museum, um, which you briefly saw a print of, and then also the digital colour study I did. I actually took the original photo last time I went to the National Gallery, and then in preparation for going again, I was getting excited and I was looking at photos from my visit before. It wasn't until I knew that I'd be going again that I decided I wanted to try and paint it, uh, which was an interesting process. <laughs> but it was really great to go to the museum again uh, with like new knowledge and new, like, a new appreciation of what I was actually looking at. First time I went, I went with a friend when I was living in London and we just kind of went in there, looked around a bit, wasn't really paying attention to which route we took and left. The second time um, I went for my birthday and I was n very newly into art and all I really wanted to see was a Van Gogh painting in person. So we did that. <laughs> but this time uh, I knew which rooms I wanted to visit, what was in those rooms. I did a lot more research beforehand, what type of uh, style and time period I'd be looking at depending on the room that I went in. I found that this time I appreciated it so much more as well because I wasn't just looking at it as a photo because I have seven plus years experience as a professional photographer so before I feel like I was kind of looking at these paintings like a photographer and viewing them that way whereas this time I was looking at brush strokes and underpaintings that were seeping through and really taken in and some of the paintings I wouldn't have even paid any attention to but this time around there was different ones that caught my eye that I don't think I would have seen before. Since going I have been working in my sketchbook just trying to start a do studies of things whether that's anatomy or colour studies or value studies stuff like that but also I've been working on being looser in my work so obviously when you're studying something or doing like a bunch of hand studies you, you're kind of trying to understand the anatomy and that's a bit different to um, a colour study where you're just focusing on where is the colour on the page and how can I kind of recreate that and add detail in slowly. Studying a painting isn't just about copying. It's really cool to look at the world through another artist's perspective in that way. So I recently made a spread in my sketchbook that I'm quite proud of. I'm sure one day I'll look back at it and be like, you are bad. But um, for now, it's kind of heading in the right direction of where I want to be. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it was a peaceful, calm vibe. Bye.